Hi, I'm Jay, and today we're trying to solve a small problem when it comes to using material that might not be ideal for the application. Stay tuned. And we're back. I'm at the bench this evening. And um, we're working through a problem. Uh, it was a discussion that came up between me and another tire, um, a guy who ties um, a heck of a good looking jig. Question came up on um, tying with materials that aren't ideal for the head that he was asked to tie, the size of jig that he was asked to tie. It was, you know, it was, it was an interesting back and forth. And as I thought more about it, it's a pretty interesting topic, at least in my mind. So the um, what we're doing tonight is um, tying on a 1 16th size head, so fairly small, um, but they want to use bucktail. So I went through some of my um, old collection, and as I've discussed before, I have drawers, uh, old card catalog style drawers that four or five of them I have picked up jigs over the years. I'm at a store and I see a jig that just catches my eye. I grab one just for my collection. I throw it in the drawer. Will I ever look at it again? Maybe never. Um, but it it's always a nice resource to have because uh, instances like this I'm able to dig through the pile of lead um, and, and come up with some interesting things that are related to the topic. Um, the jigs that we're looking at tonight, I believe, were just cast by my father, 60s, 70s, 80s. Uh, maybe they were just um, some samples of new molds that he had. Uh, I noticed a couple of them are kind of miscast, and he probably just threw them in a bucket uh, to either correct or to tie up for his own personal use, but not for sale. And there's something that we can look at and kind of learn from today. So let me switch over and turn my face on. And what we have, um, the question that we were addressing was tying on a small head size 1 16th and using bucktail. So interestingly enough, I actually found one in the collection and we'll plop it right in the vise right here. And this is a bucktail jig. It happens to be a 1 16th head. And as you can see, it's, it's uh, a little banged up. Um, but as we see here in the vise, it's a white uh, ball headed jig and is actually tied with bucktail. As we can see, the tail extends the length of the uh, body past the bend of the hook, as um, I like to uh, describe. The collar is a little big, a little wide. I do believe this was tied by my father and probably fish with for quite some time, the way that it's all banged up. Um, but with this jig, and what I think is important, uh, if available, if you have it available, when tying a small jig like this and wanting to use bucktail, is that, as we can see, this jig has a collar that extends. So in my collection, and... Uh, this looks like uh, a little bit of a miscast. Uh, it looks like the eye actually has some lead in it. But this is the type of jig that we're talking about. So it has a lead collar. This actually might be a completely different uh, jig now that I'm looking at it. It looks like this might have had a barb that was clipped off. But it does look like the eye is is uh, filled in 
kind of like a miscast. Could be the same. Could be the same hook. They both look like a. Um, this looks like an eagle claw type hook to me. It could have been. Could be a mustad. Not sure. Um, but other examples that we have. And here's. Here's one of those miscasts for sure because, as we can see, the casting has a little bit of a hole in it. So this was probably just tossed in a bucket to um, have that hole, you know, filled in with a little epoxy and some lead dust, um, or just painted as is um, and kept for personal use, not for resale. But here we can clearly see that collar on the um, shank of the hook. It, there's no uh, shape to this collar. There's nothing to uh, flare out the hair or whatnot. But the simple fact that this is a little bit wider than the hook shank lends itself to tying bucktail onto that. As we see on our example, where the hair does flare out a bit. You know, there's some, there's some, not not necessarily volume, but there's a a body to it, so to speak. Um, but we want that same, we want this same look, if we can, on a plain shank, on a plain shanked hook that we're going to try to tie. I do have a white head here, so we're going to try to get that same look on a plain shanked hook. Um, and like I said, if, if you have a mold with a collar, that's probably the best way to go, uh, or the easiest way, right, if we're going to tie this, this kind of uh, jig. but we're going to do our best now this jig it's a light wire hook it's a um, must add uh, not sure the number i'll double check that put that information down below being that the size of this jig is a quarter or smaller i'm going to go with just a regular two watt round nylon thread we'll lock this out as normal and I'll walk the thread down almost to the point of the hook. And then back up to the head. Now to help with this, you're not going to want to use your large northern bucktail with five to seven inch long hairs. Uh, you're going to waste an awful lot trying to um, just restacking your pinch um, to make it fit. If that's all you have, then you know you work with what you have. But there's a few things here that I would um, like to show. I thought I put everything out here. So the first thing is, depending on the color, here's an example of a black tail. I've already used up the part of the tail that's much longer that's typically the white or the lighter color up the sides but since this is black the whole tail is black and as we can see here the hairs that go up this tail are much shorter so a pinch from here and and we restack as normal would actually fit on a jig very nicely and still give you that nice volume as opposed to a tail with much longer hairs that when you get the pinch the tips are so uh, tapered and fine that you lose your volume. Uh, I thought I had a... here's a here's a undyed tail, a natural tail that you can see this brown part that the hairs are short and would be much easier to get a pinch 
for this size jig. So I went through the bags, uh, some of the bags I have in the file cabinets behind me, and I pulled out sometimes when ordering tails, you order what they got. Um, you know, I'd like to get large northern bucktails every time I'm placing an order. Sometimes I can't. So this is a hairline petite bucktail. And this is a chartreuse tail. It's on the yellow side since uh, some of the other heads that I picked here are more of that um, yellow chartreuse as opposed to your green chartreuse. Um, but as we can see, this hair is a little bit shorter, consider considerably shorter compared to um, our yellow bucktail that I just had. Much shorter than this yellow bucktail. I also went through my bag that I have here under my table uh, because this jig we want to be uh, chartreuse and white. Again, I found a white tail that's on the small side. It's a, on the petite side. Um, more than likely this was a younger deer, smaller tail. So it should give us the length of hair that would be ideal for tying a smaller head. So we'll start with our darker color first. And I'm going to pinch up just a little bit. It, some of these hairs are, are a little longer at the bottom. Typically I start at the very bottom of the tail and just work my way up as I'm tying jigs. But for this example, we're going to pick the hairs that are shorter on this side and about a half of the way up towards the tip of the tail. We're going to pull out those short, tiny hairs, the fuzz, the broken pieces from the base of the pinch as normal. And then we'll restack just a little bit. Hairs on this tail are pretty good. I'm just removing some of those hairs that are kinked in a way where they don't lay nicely in the pinch. And then I can switch my grip and change the length of the tail as I switch my hands. And we want the tail to be the length of the body past the bend of the hook, which is about this last dot on my uh, vise. Keep adjusting our pinch until we're at the right spot. I have another white tail here and it was a fairly long tail but as the hairs we can see as we get up towards the tip start getting a little bit shorter. I had a few tails like that in the uh, last bunch that I had here. This tail as you can see and usually the hairs at the base of the tail are um, hollow but these are very fine. This must have been a small deer. So I don't need to start as high up on the tail, on this tail, as I did on the chartreuse. We're still near the bottom. This pinch is a little thick. I know that I am going to waste a little bit. After tying a few of these, I would have a better idea on exactly the size of the pinch that I'm doing. Um, but I know that, as we can see, there's a fair amount of fuzz and the short hairs that are about half the size. I'm going to switch my grip. I 
I have to be a little careful. In the back of my mind, I'm thinking not to overdo my pinch because, you know, on one hand, I do want the tail to have a nice volume of hair. So I'm tempted to have a pinch that's a little bit bigger than it should be. So I have to be careful about that. sure that the white is the same length as the chartreuse before I switch switch hands one last time keep this pinch nice and tight Lay it in place that was a couple wraps towards the bend of the hook and then with touching wraps back up to the head now normally on a head this small I would Think about using calf tail, marabou, straight hackle, you know, without a chenille body, but just hackle feathers. Uh, longer hackle feather fibers that you peel off the stem in a pinch and tying it on like the bucktail or squirrel tail. Those would, those would be different materials that I would think about using in place of bucktail, but sometimes either bucktail is all we have um, if you're tying for a customer and the customer wants bucktail, then we're going to use bucktail um, and do our best with the materials that we have. We are going to finish this off uh, like normal with a loop of size A thread of a different color that I can just put underneath my last wrap few wraps towards the bend of the hook, touching wraps back up to the head. And I'm trying not to add too many wraps on this. I want this collar to stay nice and small, a nice little pretty collar of thread. We're going to finish this off with our lacquer based head cement. This is a nice little jig. It's a pretty color combination. It's definitely a color that I usually have in my box for sure. And I'm just um, going to center this hair on the hook by lifting it up and just dropping it and letting the hook point come up through the center. And let's take a look at this. Let's turn off my face. How'd we do? That looks like a nice profile. We have a nice amount of hair on this jig, giving it some volume without overdoing it. That collar and where our pinch, the buttons of that tail would be, is not th so thick that if we pulled on some of the hairs, you'd get the middle pieces coming out. Doesn't look bad at all. That's a pretty jig. Here we have, here with the larger collar and all white, is that original sample, that older bucktail with the lead collar. And here we have the jig that we just tied. Looks pretty good. Uh, I like them both for different reasons, actually. I think the um, the jig with the collar, I like the way this looks. I am tempted to try tying one just to see if I could do a smaller collar than this. Since the hair is not wrapped so tightly around the thinner shank of the hook, um, where it has that lead collar. 
it has a nice proportion in my eye um, as I as I kind of look at it. Um, it's those aspects that when we look at something, that when we look at art, right, um, we know what we like, though we can't really explain it. But I do think that larger collar um, does give it a little bit different look that um, is interesting to me. I kind of like that. Does it fish a little different? Probably would. It's probably a little bit more balanced as opposed to slightly weighted forward. Um, you know, as you're jigging, depending if you want it just to hang vertically or if, or if you want to jig it through the water a little bit and let it jig up and then dive down, right? Um, it's an interesting jig. It's I kind of like that. So I, you know, we spent this time just to kind of talk like 99% of my videos. It's unscripted and we're kind of just doing this off the cuff. I probably have in the back of my mind more questions now that I'd, I'd like to try to answer. I think I think in the near future we might have to tie up more of these jigs and kind of compare. Um, I might even want to dig out that what I call a goby head, um, but it's been, maybe been close to a year now. But that marabou jig I tied with that Palmer uh, jig from the uh, Palmer mold, the old old Palmer mold. I thought that was kind of interesting also because of the lead collar, uh, how the lead collar was flared to actually give some more volume to the body of the jig. I'm getting the same sense when I look at this older jig um, in this, but I think that's going to be a video for another time. I think that's going to do it for us tonight. Um, so I hope this helps my buddy out at least answering some questions in his mind. And as I've said, it's opening more questions in my mind that I think we're going to touch on at least a few more times. I, um, It's neat. I, I got a lot of different questions bouncing around my head right now. Um, we're going to see if we can kind of focus <laughs> and uh, if, if I can focus some of those thoughts, we'll put them on video. And we'll talk about this again in the future. But, like I said, I think that's going to do it for us tonight. Uh, as always, if you have any questions or comments on what we uh, did here tonight, put those down below. Um, hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any new content. Check out the website, jworthhandtied.com. And until next time, guys, keep tying and tight lines.